salvation is, 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 is our commitment to the local church. Yeah. Right? And if I go to a Chick-fil-A and do news, I'm going to get the same experience if I'm in California or if I'm in Hawaii. Why? Because they are committed to the same recipe. Yeah. But so often we are not giving people Jesus. We are giving people one another. Our own preferences, what we want, what we like. Well, it, our, our brand is Jesus, baby. And you got to understand that he is the one that, that we must rally around. And the one that we got to see other Christians and be like, that's my dog. Right? right? But so often we want to, we want all of these things divided us that should be united. Yes. You see, the thing is that we are family by blood. Now, now I, I know all of y'all got that cousin who... Uh, when you get together, or that brother-in-law or sister-in-law, uh, you got them people that you you related, but by marriage. And people start asking about me, like, "Yeah, ain't you related to him? Aren't you related to him?" And you're like, "Nope, we not blood. We related by marriage." You you distance yourself real quick, don't you? You know when, when you got a drunk uncle or all the crazy folks, because we all got them in our families. But we will say real quick, we are not related by blood. But we are family by the blood of Jesus Christ. See, biblical community has to be connected to the right source. And that source is Christ. And if we try to connect with anything other than him, right, it's not going to run properly. If you go to the gas tank and you put diesel fuel into your engine, it's not going to, into your tank, it's not going to function properly. And we must understand that as a church, we must be centered upon Jesus and he must be the one that is the source. He must be fueling your service. He's got to be fueling your worship. He's got to be fueling the fact that you came here today. And if you focus on anything but yes, that, yes, you will yes, be let down. Yes, yes. You see, the thing about it is that I've learned is that biblical community is going to cost you something. It ain't just going to be easy. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can see this up here, but, but, but y'all ever bought something and, and you're like, that's way too cheap. And then you buy it and it shows up and it's like half the size or they missing certain parts. You know, what does it say up here? I know somebody who can do it cheaper. It's supposed to look like this, but that's what they really got. <laughs> uh, what about over here, my man? He, he, he said, I know somebody who can do it cheaper. And he shows him a picture, but the quality is supposed to look like this horse, but look what he gets. <laughs> See, in church, in church, in church, we, we take shortcuts to the biblical community. We, we, don't, we don't show up. Uh, we, we, we're not there for one another. We don't talk to one another. We don't pray for one another. We try to do life alone, right? But it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something to pick up the phone. It's going to cost you something to stop by. It's going to cost you something to prepare a meal, right? It's going to cost you something to remember a person in prayer, but understand something that the cost is worth it. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. See, I don't want a church that just looks like a name on the building. I want a church where we're seeing lives change. I want to be a part of something where God is moving. I want to be a part of something where God is shaping and people who came in broken come out whole. Thank you, God. That's what God called us to, y'all. But it's going to cost us something. Thank you, Lord. you see, we are all called to serve God and to serve one another. Jesus, who are our example, it says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, it wasn't about his preferences. It wasn't about what he wanted. It says, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Some people, we can't even get them to, 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 to serve for five minutes. Right? Because it's about their own preference. And if it's not the way you want it, people will stop showing up. But we've got to understand that we are called to serve God. Well, look at that church usher up there. Uh, they, they, they pulling out the, 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 they pulling out the nine on you, saying, you won't sit here. Or if you come into church and you sit in somebody else's spot, they look at you all sideways like, what are you doing in my place? Right? We've got to understand it. It ain't about you, boo. It's about what God wants. We are called to serve. We are called to give. We are called to love one another. Here's the thing. So often in church, we try to outdress one another. We try to impress one another. We try to one up one another, don't we? But we need to start out serving one another, out honoring one another, out loving one another. Right? That's what we need to get to as the body of believers. See, we ought to serve one another in love. Now, now, the thing is, though, the question for us is how am I using my time? How am I using my talents? How am I using my treasures? Right? Because it is bigger than each of us, but it requires all of us. 
And, and, and if we are really going to see God move, because God operates when we are on one accord. God flows. What does he say? When two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. Right? When, when a few saints start to pray, God's in the midst of them. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people. So when your worship combines with my worship, God starts to sit in our worship, and he does a whole lot more. You really got to understand when we are on one accord and together, living with Life, the way God called us to live it, God's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to move here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to yeah. show signs and wonders. When you look at the first church we talked about last week, there was so much going on because they were on one accord. It wasn't about them. It wasn't about their preferences. It was about something bigger. And we've got to get to the place where we go back to what God called us to do. But the thing is, uh, what, 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 what Paul teaches is he says that they have to be patient in tribulation. Now, the issue with most of us and all of us, really, we are all going to go through something. Right, I heard a wise person say you're either in something, you're either coming out of something, or you're going into something. Right? There's always going to be storms. There's always going to be difficulty. But he's telling us to be patient in tribulation. Come on, Paul, what are you writing to me here, man? That's a whole lot easier said than done. You mean to tell me when I'm going through my difficulty, I'm supposed to be patient? Oh, yeah, God, you're good all the time? You mean to tell me when, when you lose a child, that's supposed to be something that I can be patient about? You mean to tell me when I'm grieving, I'm supposed to be patient? When I'm looking for a job, I'm supposed to be patient? How is that? But the thing about biblical community is that when we are together, it makes the load lighter. You see, he says, bear one another's burdens. And so you will fulfill the law of Christ. We are called to bear one another's burdens. Nobody should suffer in silence in here. And here's the thing. This week, I went through one of the worst weeks I've had probably in two years. My, my son was attacked by the devil. And he went through all sorts of chaos. And I'm like, that's not the same kid. And I was, I cried and I was upset and, and I went through the whole process of should I just handle this by myself or should, should, I, should I share it with anybody, should I talk to people? But here's what I did, the Spirit of the Lord said you need to reach out to people because so often we decided I've got to look like i got it all together. I was that close to calling Sean and saying look you need to preach this week because I can't handle it. But when I reached out to some people and said look bro, you ain't going through this thing by yourself. And, 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 you know, I called some of my brothers. I called a few other pastors, and they said, look, be encouraged. Because I went through the same thing with mine. Yes. And understand that, that the reason that he's so intense in attacking him is because there was a call in his life. Yes. And, and you guys, you know, we got to understand yes. that, that I could have decided just to stop and shut it down. But I said, no, God, you made me to stand here in this spot. And I ain't standing in my own strength and my own power. But Holy Ghost, I need you. What does Sean say? Holy Ghost, activate. And my sisters and my brothers, they said, look, we're going to go to war with you. That's why I got my camo on today, y'all, because I'm ready to fight. I'm not giving up. And I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. I'm going to stand in the Word. And guess what? Brandon going to stand with me. Sean going to stand with me. Our day going to stand with me. Some other people going to stand with me. And guess what? We are going to be victorious. This is what my brother told me the other day. He said, look, man, I, I, I don't have all the words, but you know what? I stand with you. I don't know everything to tell you, but I'll I, I stand with you. Don't it feel better when somebody's just with you? You go to the doctor, and you're out there in the waiting room, you're nervous, and somebody just sits with you in a hospital bed. Somebody just sits with you. All of these things are better together. We are designed to work in community, y'all. We run from community when we should be running to community. You see, biblical community is a team sport. It's a team sport. We, we, we got a call in the summertime, and, 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 and Brother Ade was trying to, trying to get his floors redone in his house. Uh, he, was, he, he, was, he had to move a lot of stuff. And he called on the brothers, and, and we came out of that joint deep, y'all. We were, that was about six or eight of us. But the thing that we didn't anticipate was the weight of the piano. <laughs> And it wasn't a piano with electrical stuff in it. It wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't like, you know, our keyboard. This thing had solid wood. I mean, it was like, it was anointed wood. I don't know what kind of wood this thing was. It was the same wood they built the ark with, y'all. I mean, this was the roughest wood and the heaviest piano ever made. But we were able to carry the load because there were enough of us and because we work together. 
And a few brothers got on one side, a few folks got on the other side, and we came up with a plan and a strategy, and guess what? We got it out, didn't we? And if we couldn't have got it out, we would have called some more brothers, right? Because understand something, our mission was to move the piano, and no matter what it took, we were going to do it together. Right. And no matter what it takes to get people to know Jesus, we got to do it together. Yeah. No matter what it takes to, to get you to that place where God is moving into your life, we got to do it together. Yeah. See, he says, be constant in prayer. We are called to be a praying community, right? And sometimes when you pull out something and people are like, I'm praying for you, guess what? That was the prayer. Yeah. Ah, they were, but I, I need some people that's going to remember me when you go home. Every member in this church, the system, new members class, I beg you, I say, please pray for me. Because this ain't easy, y'all. I got to go to work on Monday. I got to be, I got to, I'm a husband. I got a family. I got rental properties. I got a job. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to preach about. Please pray for a brother. You know, don't just like, let's pass the Marseille. Right? It's more than that. But understand something. When we devote ourselves to pray, the first church in Acts, they were devoted to pray. So often, prayer ministry is, 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 is the least attended, right. but it's the most important, right? right? And tomorrow, I, I'm literally setting up a Zoom call for the brothers, and, and you know, I got some brothers talking about, I'm going through this and going through that. I'm like, let's, let's get on the call. Let's bombard heaven with prayer because yeah. prayer works. Yeah. Prayer changes things. Yeah. I've learned that pr the prayers of a righteous person, they avail much. And if we want, we live under an open heaven, y'all. We've got to get to the place where we are constantly praying. Yeah. When we devote to prayer, we will discover God's power. Yeah. See, the Bible says that in here, it says contribute to each other's needs. And I've learned that people need roadside assistance. And we are all going to break down from time to time. We are all going to break down. I remember uh, me and Jaden were outside in the yard over the summer, and we looked across the street, and we saw a lady that was pulled over. Right? And so often people pull over across the street because there's kind of a little shoulder, and they pull over to make a call. They pull over to go in their trunk. But we noticed over time she kept sitting there. And I was going around my business, I had stuff to do, but I realized that she had a flat tire. And so me and Jay, we walked over to her and said, ma'am, do you need some help? She said, yes, can I use your phone? And, and I'm trying to call AAA. And I was like, man, today you don't have a phone? You know, it just blew my mind, right? Because I, I mean, I met a homeless man last night and he had a phone. I, a whole different topic. But understand something, understand something, right? People need assistance. And we can be so busy going about our business that we bypass a person in need. Because I looked over there and then she looked like everybody else, but then I finally realized that she had some issues. And she's like, I'm trying to get to work. I don't want to lose my job. Here, ma'am, you can use my phone. Ma'am, let me go in my garage because I've got better tools and I can change your tire for you and get you going on your way. Right? Understand something. Everybody needs roadside assistance. Yes. And we should contribute to the needs of others. Because we must recognize that the enemy is busy. Yeah. 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 See, the enemy loves to pick at loose strings. Yeah. And this is what I've learned. That, you know, God just made it real obvious to me this week. The enemy loves to pick at loose strings. Y'all ever had uh, that, that, that string that's sticking out of your t-shirt? Any of y'all just like to pull at it? <laughs> so I was in the back one day, and we, we were trying to get the carpet replaced. Yeah. And, and we, we're constantly repairing and fixing it, right? We're constantly working on this thing, right? And, and my son, bless his heart, he looked at it out of his curiosity. He just pulled the string, and he just kept on pulling. And he has helped me fix the carpet before. And I was like, yo, don't you know all the times we work on this and you pull the string? Understand something. When there are loose strings in your life, the enemy will grab that string, and he will pull it. Well, the problem is the more you pull, the more the garment comes apart. Mm -hmm. Now, we must understand when we don't get along with each other, loose string. When somebody says something to you that you don't like, loose string. When you don't feel like showing up, loose string. And if you allow the enemy to start pulling on your loose string, eventually the garment that you are holding onto will ultimately unravel. And my thing is that I'm not going to let the enemy take a loose string in my life and keep pulling it. I'm going to cut it off, Amen. right? And I'm going to seal it up. But that's what we must do as a church. Not let the enemy pull all of our loose strings like church hurt. Our loose strings like my preference not being met. Our loose strings like, well, I'm just not feeling it today. No, we've got to seal some things, cut some things because the enemy is busy, but we have the victory. Amen. We've got 
got everything that we need to be victorious, but so few of us are putting these into practice. Let, let, me, let, me, let me finish this up. He tells us to rejoice in hope. Last thing, last thing, he tells us to rejoice in hope. And we as a church should live with the expectation that God is going to be God. Let me say that again. We as a church should live with the expectation that God is going to be God. So the difficulty is not the end. So often we, we watch movies, right? And, and we understand that there is a, a downtime, right? If everything was good, y'all would never go to the movies. I mean, if you went to the movies to see uh, the sunshine and the things going well, you would never see the movie. There has to be a conflict, right? But in the midst of the conflict, nobody turns the movie off. But us as believers, we run into conflict, we run into tribulation, and we run into difficulty, and we think that's the end. Understand that God orders your steps, and he said that the good work that he began, he will bring it forward to completion. Amen. So here's the thing. We've got to live with expectations. You know, when I was growing up, y'all know who that is, right? Everybody know who that guy is? Yeah, like, come on, man. So, so everybody knows that AI, right? Now, when I was growing up, we would, we would flock to the gym to see him play. When I was growing up, the, the stadiums were packed. And the reason is, was because we wanted to be in a building because we knew something special was going to happen. We knew it was going to be some dunks. We knew it was going to be some threes. We knew it was going to be something amazing that we wanted to bear witness to. Y'all remember Martin? And y'all remember the Cosby show? Back in the day, you didn't have no DVR. Right? So come Thursday night, you was ready. Right? Come Thursday night, you couldn't wait to tune in. Why? Because you knew it was going to be funny. You knew you, you stayed up late. You got ready because you knew it was going to be good. What would church look like if we showed up and we knew God was going to do something good? What would it look like if you saw your difficulty and you like, God, I know you're going to move, but I know this is going to be good. When I'm looking at my little boy, I'm like, oh, God, I know it's going to be good. I know you're not done with him yet. I know you're not done with my situation yet. I'm expecting you to be God because you said so. I'm expecting you to move because of who you are. This ain't got nothing to do with me. It's not my power, not my might, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, God moves in biblical community. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we are stopping here. We must understand that God moves in biblical community, y'all. And, and the thing is, it's time for some of us to move towards community. You know, and the question I want to ask you is, what is, it, is it time for you to move towards a relationship with Jesus? Is it time for you to, to, to move towards becoming a member of this church? Is it time for you to move towards connecting to this small group? Is it time for you to move towards reaching out to that person that's been on your heart? Is it time for you to move towards a greater step and a greater level of transparency? Is it time for you to start using your spiritual gifts? See, God moves in community. And this is a team sport. God's going to do, he's already moving in great ways. He's already opening up new doors. And I'm excited, y'all. I'm expecting. I'm looking forward to him moving in some powerful ways as we go into 2023. See, the enemy is already peeking to your future. And he understands that God's got a plan. So he's trying to stop God in his tracks. But understand, the only reason, only way that God's going to stop moving is if you stop showing up. We are the ones that have the power over the ejector seat. So today it's time to move towards the biblical community. And I, first thing I want to pray is for those who don't know Jesus as the Lord and the Savior. If you don't know God, if you don't have a relationship with him, and you want to have a relationship, and you're saying, Pastor, I need to step towards Jesus today, I want you to do me a favor and just raise your hand where you are. Maybe you've drifted away from God. You've allowed church hurt to, uh, to take over and isolate you. Maybe you've got issues in your life where you're saying, you know, I don't want anybody to know my business. And, you know, they're, they're, they're going to mess it all up. But today I, I feel like I need some help, Pastor. If that's you, you're, you're saying, I, I need to take a bigger step towards the local community. I want you to raise your hand right where you are. And I want to pray for you this morning. Because the middle community, great things take place. And God's calling us to another level as a church and as a people. So I want to pray for those who have raised their hands and those who have made a faith step today. First of all, I want to pray for those who don't know Jesus. Uh, and we're going to pray a prayer. I want you to repeat after me. It's simple. It says this. It says, Lord, I am a sinner. And I need Jesus. It says, I've messed up. I've made mistakes. And I've missed the mark. Come into my heart. Live on the inside of me. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you paid my price. Come into my heart and make me clean. Say this when you say I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Now I want to pray for the person who's heard this message and you, you, you feel a call in your life to do to go to another place and another another level. 
Maybe your call is to connect to America as a member of this church. I want you to grab that green card that says, I'm ready to connect. I want you to fill that card out and don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about anything else. Tomorrow is to take care of yourself. You focus on taking a step towards God. You focus on taking a step towards community. God's calling some of us to go to another level. And he wants to move in great ways. So if you're ready to take that step, I want you to grab that green card. I want you to fill it out. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I, I've been working in isolation. I've been living alone, but I, I just believe God can do some great things in my life. I want to pray for you real quick. Father, thank you, God, for those who have made a faith step today. Those, God, who are saying, I need to connect more. I need to use my time, my talent, my treasures more. I want to live in expectation of God moving in my life, around my life. I want to live in, in, in a full expectation of knowing that you want to show up. God, help us to be patient in tribulation. God, you said many are the afflictions of the righteous but you deliver them from them only. God, you said when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will raise up a standard against them. So God, we, we declare the standard is coming. We know that those who are with you, the one who is with us is greater than the one who is against us. So God, we thank you for the victory. We give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Hey, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise.
so very much, God, for your faithfulness, your love. Thank you for this moment, God, to reaffirm and recommit ourselves to you. God, we walk together in biblical community. God, break your bread together, fellowshiping together, loving one another. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for every blessing. God, keep us, Lord, God, as, as we get ready to depart from this time, Lord. Watch over us as we leave this place, but I pray we never leave your presence. I pray this, this morning, Lord God, that your spirit will be upon us, your grace will be with us. Lord, as we get ready to dismiss, we thank you, we bless you, we give you honor, we love you. Thank you for the children today, Lord God, who are able to come and read. Thank you for the songs. Thank you for the reading of scripture, for the fellowship. And Lord, we bless the food in the back, Lord God, even though we know it's cake and ice cream, somehow, some way, according to your divine power, let it be nourished into our bodies. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Keep us as we leave this place in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, I, like I said, I got to run. What we're going to do? First time guest, I'm going to bring our day. He's going to greet you. Uh, our day is one of our assistant uh, pastors in train. Our day is going to come up uh, to greet all of our first time guests. And then we're also going to dismiss everybody to the back for fellowship, food, uh, and all that good stuff. So, God bless you. Oh, and also the offering. If you're giving offering, the, the, uh, the receptacles in the back. Uh, if you're giving online, our information is up here. We want to thank you for your giving and believe in God to do great things in your life. If I don't get to talk to your first time guest, make sure you come back next week so I get to meet you again. Amen. All right? That'll be my Come on back next week. Amen. Amen. So, God bless you. You are dismissed. And I can't wait to see you again soon. <laughs>